Well, hello everyone. Again, uh, this is Steve Marinucci at Beatles Examiner welcoming you to another another edition of Things We Said Today, our weekly crazy discussion of what's going on in the Beatle world. And boy, has this been a week. Let me first uh, introduce uh, everybody who's, uh, who's with us uh, tonight. First of all, the co-host of uh, the host, I should say, of Every Little Thing, Mr. Ken Michaels. Hello, Ken. Hi, Steve. Hi, everyone. Hi, Ken. And next uh, is um, my uh, is our resident musicologist, uh, now up in Maine and enjoying baseball season because the Red Sox are in last place. Mr. Alan Cozen. Hello, Alan. <laughs> hey, Steve. Hello, everyone. And. Uh, we're a we're a transcontinental group uh, here out uh, in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, uh, a new resident of the state of Pennsylvania is Beatle fans Al Sussman. Good evening, uh, Al. Hi, Steve. Hello there, everybody. Uh, but and it's in uh, western Pennsylvania is a big state, and uh, where I'm in uh, now the western part of the state, just just out about just northwest of Pittsburgh, a little town called Sewickley. Wow. So okay. we're in. So there's, we're in a, there's, just, a, there's a song or a joke there. I'm not sure which, but <laughs> all right. I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to go there anyway. Um, like I said, this has been a busy week. Um, we're going to start with the obvious. Uh, today is the 15th and this morning the Beatles announced the release of uh, the new one plus uh, DVD CD package uh, with the uh, videos. We should mentioned first of all that they led up to it two days ago with a strange little countdown video that's that a few people picked up was like a you know a countdown in front of a uh, a film not everybody not everybody did but a few people picked up on that and they went you know maybe that's what that's leading into and sure enough it was we got the word this morning they, they're going to uh release the uh they're going to actually it's kind of a, an upgrade of the one album because it's it's a you know it's taking the one album to a different spot, and it's going to they're going to first of all remaster and remix the songs on the one CD, and they're going to release that that'll be available separately, and then they're going to do packages with one and two DVDs of the uh, one album videos. They're going to put all the songs from one on on a DVD, in both DVD and Blu-ray, and then. They're going to also have deluxe editions with three discs with the CD and two DVDs or two Blu-rays. And the second disc is going to have a bunch of bonus videos, unreleased things and things we haven't seen in a long time. And, and, you know, they've really dug into the vault. And so let's start. The obvious question is, gentlemen, your reaction. And I'm going to I'll. Do mine last, but uh, let me start with. I know Alan. Alan, you're the most. If there's anybody that's really the pessimistic person, it's you. And I'm going to start with you. <laughs> you okay. I mean, what do you what do you, what do you think? Um, I mean, I was a little pessimistic when the countdown came in because I mean, Apple has um, done an awful lot of teasing over the years and um, come out with things like a an expensive fountain pen or whatever. And, you know, and like I said, when we talked uh, the other day, I, I'm, I'm not alone. A lot of people are so used to being disappointed by things Apple has done, things they have not put out that they were expecting or that, you know, I think people were trying to perhaps not let their imaginations run away with them before the announcement and, and expect maybe the worst. When I saw what the actual announcement was, um, which wasn't totally a surprise, I mean, a lot of the clues um, pointed towards it being the videos for the one album, which they were, I think, talking about releasing a year ago. You know, I, I was actually pretty pleased with what they've announced. I mean, we'll have to see what it looks like when we get it. But um, they did put up a video where they show a comparison between the um, un- restored film and the restored film and they put up a uh, about a minute or two of strawberry fields in the restored version and, and i gotta say these things look beautiful um the fact that the second dvd or 
Blu-ray has 23 tracks or 23 videos. Um, you know, that's an awful lot of bonus material. And it includes things like, you know, real love and, and that kind of thing, which makes sense if you're going to have a, a collection of Beatles hits. It includes some of the B-sides that uh, were not included on uh, one because they were B-sides. And I think what I was really pleased by was the fact that for Hello, Goodbye, Paperback Writer and Rain and some of the others that I think Ticket to Ride maybe, uh, they they included some of the alternate versions of, of the videos that – a lot of people who collect these things know, um, perhaps not all of the alternate versions, so there are still some rarities out there. But um, I, I was happy that they are going to, you know, we're going to get, for instance, in Hello Goodbye, we're going to get the Pepper costumes, we're going to get the street clothes, and we're going to get that third alternative one where they cut the two together and, and added some extra material. So, you know, that was nice. I also am really interested by the fact that um, they're going to be remixing. You know, they've remastered a lot, but they haven't remixed an awful lot. I mean, they re the the really the only album, full album that has come out remixed. Well, okay. There was the uh, Help in, in Rubber Soul that uh, George Martin remixed in 1987, but what he tried to do there was pretty much approximate his original mix. Um, the only radical remixes we've had are the ones on the Yellow Submarine song track. A lot of people hate those. I really like them. Um, you know, for instance, Nowhere Man, you know, when I first heard that on headphones, that was incredible. That, that the vocals at the beginning, which in the original mix are all on one side. In the song track mix, your head is right in the middle of the harmonies there. Um, so right. I'm hoping that there are going to be some nice remixes in this because the equipment is so much more flexible now. There's, there's so much you can do as a lot of people have shown with the rock band stems, you know, and plus we get 5.1 for all of these. Right. So, yeah. So all told, you know, it's uh, a, a really um, appealing set and I'm very eager to see it. And I know a lot of other people are. Wait, and you don't think Let It Be Naked was was also – because I thought – Oh, yeah. That, okay. Yeah. yeah, that was a remix too. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Except mm, – okay. Well, a lot of those tracks on, on Let It Be Naked were not the same tracks yep. that were on the Let right. It Be commercial album. Right. That's true. No, I, I, no, I, right. no, I agree with that. But I mean they, they, so they wouldn't the – So they wouldn't, they, use, they wouldn't be remixes – of existing masters they they were simply but, you know different takes right but the um I, i'm trying to the smoothness or whatever of the overall the overall mix was was radically different than i guess because i mean obviously it wasn't the phil Spector mix so i'm mean, the and, phil Spector and, they were, and they were different so. takes in yeah i think it right. also the cases of what was on Let It Be Naked, they weren't the same takes that were right, on but it also had, But it also had a different texture. At right. least I thought it did. But um, so that counts that, that counts more as an archival extra, like the stuff yeah. on the anthology than, yeah. than mm -hmm. a okay. remix. You know, with remixes, I mean, we, this is a topic we can get into maybe later in the discussion, but there are, you know, there are two schools of thought. You know, either it should be exactly as we had it in the 60s or – we should go back to the masters and see if we can make these things sound better because, you know, we know we can without violating the, the, the Beatles original intentions. And there are people who feel very strongly on both sides, but, um, but maybe we should get back to that and let everyone else talk about their responses to the okay. announcement first. All right. All right. Uh, uh, Al, let's, let me get your reaction. Well, of course, uh, I, I guess I've sort of become the, uh, the semi-official defender of the one album because we've <laughs> talked about it so much here and in other places. Uh, so my, you know, my initial reaction when I saw this was, was basically about damn time because really when you think about it, it's been 15 years since, in fact, it'll be almost exactly 15 years when this package is, or these packages uh, are released in November 
almost exactly 15 years since one the original one album was uh was first released and you would have figured that you know that putting out a you know a video companion to one which in fact the bootleggers had done quite so you know in the early 2000s uh but you would have thought that apple would have would have done a video companion in you know by at least about 2005 so they're right. about 10 years they're about 10 years overdue but uh but alan makes a good point that it is very encouraging that they're that they're not simply putting the you know videos for the 27 songs on uh that are on one on uh you know on the video that it is that there are going to be the alternate versions of several of the videos um, and and as well as other material so it's so it is very encouraging and yes uh the 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 remixing element uh is uh, is is definitely uh, something that uh that is you know certainly in the case of uh, in the the feelings of hardcore fans uh it's uh you know again quite overdue but um okay. it should be very interesting to see how it all comes out yeah they've been really reticent to do this kind of thing and the fact that they're doing it with their you know with an album that has been so so big for them is really interesting uh, uh, that's it's almost a little scary that they're that they're doing that they're taking that risk it's almost scary that they they're actually agreeing to take that risk because they don't usually kind of, they don't usually do that and um although so, they probably it, again they probably should have done it 10 years ago no i i agree i agree yeah. but Mm. It, this is not something uh, you, you wonder who who's been yelling and screaming and, and got them to finally agree. But anyway, Ken, what do you think? <laughs> you want oh, to finish out? Go ahead. Finish, oh, I, was, finish. I was just going to say, finish you, mean, you, mean, you mean besides Bruce Pfizer? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. Ken, go ahead. Go ahead. I couldn't be more thrilled because um, – this is something that I think most Beatle fans, if you if you ask them to put together a top five list of things they want the most, this would be in just about everybody's top five somewhere. And even when you and I, Steve, did a similar kind of show, what we would like to see come out on the Beatles, I think this was your number one. Uh, yeah, I think it of was. all of all the things you wanted to come out on the Beatles, this one ranked number one. So I think that this makes perfect sense. And like Al said. It, it's this just took way too long thinking in terms of business as i always do uh nobody certainly most people that i know of wasn't expecting the beatles one to be the mammoth success that it became but certainly in 2000 when it became this this huge success worldwide you would have thought that christmas of 2001 <laughs> they would have rode the wave of this and really capitalized on it no pun intended mm -hmm. and just put uh the, the the videos out it would have made perfect sense but what what i'm most excited about because i've always thought they've got to put out a video companion to the beatles one and if all you did was just focus on those 27 songs there would be the biggest uproar amongst beatle fans for not having strawberry fields forever on there Mm -hmm. And not having revolution on there, considering Strawberry Fields is considered to be such a creative, you know, ahead of its time video. Everybody points to that video. How can you not have a video collection without Strawberry Fields forever on there? But mm -hmm. like uh, like everyone here has been saying, to put on the alternate takes, I love the fact that they're going to include Free as a Bird and Real Love. And even the most so recent video, for so so Words of Love. Words of Love, which came from uh, the On Air, the second BBC compilation. They made a video for that. So it's just nice that they've collected all this other stuff from recent years. The the um, the medley from Love of Within You, Without You, and Tomorrow Never Knows. Whether we like the videos or not, it's, it's just to put them all on one package is really nice. The other thing I like about this is that the Beatles one really does cater to a mainstream audience. And at the same time, something like this to have the videos not only would cater to the same audience, but also to the hardcore fans, too, 
because the ones who have collected all these videos all all these years that have been on bootleg, they're going to want this anyway because it's going to be the best picture quality. Plus, it's also going to draw in uh, the mainstream crowd and new Beatle fans as well. And also, I want to ask you this question, Steve. I don't know if you guys know, but I thought that you said at the beginning of the show you could buy the CD alone. Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. Yes, you can. Okay, because I also think that since the Beatles 1 became the biggest selling CD of the last decade, and in fact, since the 2000s, this is going to really catapult the Beatles 1 to becoming one of the biggest selling CDs or titles, I should say of all time because if you're going to buy it for the for the videos you got to buy the cd with it so that's going to count as a sales unit as well so uh, I mean, no, it's you kinda... don't actually you you can get the dvd separately and you can get the blu-ray separately oh you can there are, um, right yes there are seven configurations we should say um plus possibly vinyl which would make eight there's the cd cd plus dvd cd plus blu-ray DVD only, Blu-ray only, deluxe with the two DVDs or deluxe with the blue two Blu-rays, um, both of which have the CD in it. Um, so yeah, that's oh, those, okay. those are the formats. And for those of us who like to collect everything, this is going to be really expensive. Right, mm. and it's also the the songs are coming out on vinyl, also double LP. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, that makes eight. <laughs> they yep. ought to put it out on a track just for the hell of it <laughs> you, know? you know what i noticed i mean while we were talking I, I just noticed this um in the uh notes that uh they put out about what actually is on it at the end of the dvd one um is long and winding road and it says the clip is taken straight from the let it be movie which means that it is not the long and winding road that you hear on the one album or the let it be album it's Mm -hmm. it's without the strings i i think i mean they don't say that they're replacing the soundtrack with the soundtrack everyone knows so that's going to be a surprise to some people i think in fact oddly Mm. enough it's the version we were since we were just talking about it. It's the version that's on "Let It Be Naked." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so and okay. also and also Ballad of, Ballad of John and Yoko" has "Let It Be Outtakes," which is really, I mean, it's, you know, it's some of that stuff that that Ron Furman did, and uh, so we're going to get to to see some of the, at least some of that. Um, but but wait, anyway, those are the I, same outtakes that have always been in the Ballad of John and Yoko. Right. The, orig- oh, okay. the original yeah. promo clip features. Out- oh, right, right. <laughs> so, right, um, right. of course, you know, I'm, there are I'm, probably a whole lot of people right. who haven't seen the original promo. So, right. yeah. Right. I, I have to say that I'm I'm pretty pleased. It was funny uh, leading up to today. Some of the, the theories that people were coming up with. I mean, you, uh, there was one theory that uh, there was going to be a joint tour of, of Paul and Ringo, which, you know, uh, you kind of knew that was. But I mean, the fact that they'd been fooling around with the, the YouTube videos for so long, uh, you know, just as recently as May. And, you know, I I was. You know, the word was at the time that they were just doing house cleaning. But, I mean, obviously that's not true. But, you know, there, there's – this is, you know, I'm, I'm – uh, this is – right. You're right, Ken. This is one of the things on my bucket list. You know, I mean, you could go through and say, you know, why do they have – why don't they have every version? Well, you they, they wouldn't have every version. I think the one video that I really miss that I wish was there was Shout from Around the Beatles. Um, well, but, has, but that's not really a video. But, it's just no, but it's, you know, a, it's just a performance, and plus the only existing footage of that has the credits for around the Beatles, you know, play, uh, you know, over it. So mm. it doesn't make any sense for something like that to be included in a package like well, this. The day trip around on disc two, the one of the day trippers on disc two is from the music of Lennon and McCartney. So, yeah, well, yeah, you know, but it doesn't have credits, you know. No, that's <laughs> over it. That's true, but you know. I'm just, I, I, I'm just saying. And they also, actually, they also have the because it was out on bootleg. They have the the versions of those songs without the audience. So I don't know. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. I'm, I, I'm, I'm thrilled. I mean, this is fantastic. Uh, if you know, there had to be anything 
to uh, put out. This was this is definitely it. And I and I was got I got into a conversation with somebody on the Hoffman board today, who said he didn't think younger people would go for this. And what you said, Al, basically, I agree with that. that That's this is nonsense. Young people... That's absolute right. nonsense. You know, right. it's, you know, because the core uh, consumer of the one album for the last 15 years has been young people. Because let's face it, that album, uh, especially, you know, given the, the grousing that so many of us were doing going into its release, saying there's no need for this, you know. So people are, people either your age or my age, uh, you know, have not been buying I like the, the I, one, I, the I like one the album unless, I, unless they're ultra ultra completists and have to have everything including the corrected little bit on uh on day tripper uh mm -hmm. but it's um you know so to say that young people aren't going to buy this is is absolute nonsense especially no, given I, that a lot of them probably have never seen the videos i completely agree i completely agree with you i mean that that's just i mean plus uh, we are in even if even if we're not in a MTV age, we are in a video age, and you know, sure. videos have a lot, a lot of, uh, you know, people are very attracted to videos. So this is something that's going to do extremely well. They they know it, you know. Anybody that doesn't realize that is, is it just doesn't isn't aware of what's going on because it's it, it will be this will be big. So yes, I think and and I, 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 a, a lot of us have been clamoring for the release of Let It Be already and all that stuff. Sure. And, and yes, mm -hmm. of course, that should come out. But I have to say, as a watching experience, this is going to be a lot more fun than Let It Be. Oh, please. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In fact, I, I, yeah, I recently uh, uh, sat down to try and watch Let It Be. And you just kind of go, eh, even even. Some of the better quality that, that video that showed up recently online that it was a, a little better than normal. Still watching that, it's just not. It'll be interesting to see the, the Let It Be clips on on the new DVDs and and see how they you know how, how the reaction to them and who knows maybe maybe that will propel some action, but God knows it'll t it would take forever. You know, I mean, they look at how long it took them to listen to this to mm -hmm. listen to us yelling for the videos yeah so I well mean, you know uh, there's probably a there's probably a lot of decision making going on here other than the fact of should we do this because you mm -hmm. got to clean up all the videos you got to decide which videos to use right. how far into the catalog are you going to go are you going to include free as a bird in real love are you going to include the newer stuff um all that has to get decided so you know i think there's a lot more to it than just you know people have been waiting for this and that's why we're doing it mm-hmm if you look at the videos that they've posted, I mean, it shows some people doing some of the cleanup work, and they talk about some of the things being reconstructed from, you know, the original footage, you know, to match what was in the in the clip. But instead of just cleaning up the clip, reconstructing it to make a, a brand new version of the same clip. Um, so an awful lot of work went into this. And I do believe that even though these videos are old. Um, it's still so historic because it's the Beatles. And some of the video channels, like VH1 or VH1 Classic or Palladia or any of those channels that still play videos at times, they'll insert a video here and there from this because it's the Beatles. Mm -hmm. And that's going to spur even more interest. And mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm sure there are going to be some TV commercials, too, coming out of this. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. There's also, I also was mm -hmm. told... That there's going to be for those of those of our listeners in England, there will be a British television special. I'm not sure about America, but I did hear that there's going to be something in the UK. So there, you, there you go. I would be surprised that someone did. Someone should try to pick it up here. Then I would think some channel would. If what I the the special I've heard uh, is uh, by ITV, and it's for a, it's a British series about. Uh, it's an ongoing music series, so I don't know that that would get picked up. There'll probably be something done here special. I mean, I would think you would you would think there would. But let's talk for a minute about the. Let's get back to the remixing and everything. And I'm and I'm going to ask everybody how they feel about that uh, because that's actually I mean that's a 
that's not a, a something that everybody's going to accept straight off. I don't. I don't think. I mean, I. I loved Yellow Submarine's uh, soundtrack, um, you know, and I also love Let It Be Naked. But uh, it's interesting. I mean, this is kind of a breakthrough for them that they're going to remix everything like this. And it'll be interesting to see what they come up with. Will they come up with a stereo master of She Loves You, for example? Ha <laughs> ha. No. Um, um, there yeah, have been no, some interesting experiments with that, though, using some software recently that actually makes a very plausible sounding stereo She Loves You. You can find it on YouTube. Yeah, I was just I was just going to say that because I've, I've grabbed the audio from a few of those and um, – they are very convincing, extremely convincing. Yeah, there is uh, one guy, I can't remember what name he goes under, but he's done Love Me Do and She Loves You. And, you know, got to say, they're both really good. The one I heard, I was just listening to one the other day that did She Loves You and I'll Get You. Hmm. And I can't remember, it was a Ger- I think it was a German guy, because I, I think he had an accent. But, yeah, there are some, if you go looking on YouTube for Beatles Rare Stereo, there are some very interesting, and if you have, I, I won't tell people to do anything nasty, but if you have audio capture software, they're great to download as MP3s and stick them on your iTunes. Uh, um, they're, they really are. But um, how does everybody feel about the remixing, though? Um, I'll say, well, let's go. Start, I'll start with you, Alan, again. Back um, the same way. You know, I'm fine with it. I mean, originally, um, years ago, I would have been sort of an original mix purist. And I think that changed when I heard the Yellow Submarine song track, because I thought so many of those were, you know, they didn't make it a different song. It was the song you knew and loved. Um, but the placements were so much better than the originals had been. And I interviewed them about that. Um, one of the um, engineers, I can't remember which his name actually, but he said basically what they had done is, you know, when, when they made Pepper, for instance, they took four tracks and then they made a, uh, a copy of the four tracks, combining some of the tracks onto a separate tape in order to buy themselves a couple more tracks. And then they added new tracks to that. They apparently had saved all the originals before they were mixed, and so now they have, you know, as many tracks as you want on digital. You know, you put it on Pro Tools or something, and so they were able to get all of the original uh, instrumental and vocal tracks that you couldn't have pried apart earlier because they had been, you know, before the final mix, they had already been mixed down to. Uh, uh, a, a transitional mix so there was nothing you could mm-hmm. do but now they you know by going back and getting all those original tapes putting them on to uh, I, I assume they used pro tools but a multi-track digital format they now had a lot of flexibility that they didn't have at the time they made the original albums um and we're talking mm-hmm. about pepper mystery tour era kind of stuff and 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 some well, of the pepper I, stuff yeah right well, um, uh, it, that's true. That's true. And when you're talking about Yellow Submarine, you're talking a different or a certain period. But we're talking now about a much wider area, you know, back right. as far as '63. And that that's interesting to me. How they're going to do a deal with those early tracks? You know, how, how they if they're going to be able to have that same flexibility? Because obviously, uh, the way I see it, the way I think it is, and tell me if I'm wrong. When you're dealing with that that yellow submarine stuff, you have or that era. You have, you know, there it was recorded a certain way where you had those all those tracks available. Where earlier you don't have that kind of flexibility. Am I, am I right? Yeah, you're basically right. But you do still have four separate tracks to work with, and plus there are things you can do today with, um, you know, for instance teasing things out by getting the out of phase material and, and that kind of thing. I don't know don't know if they do that there, but I think they I think they do because they did some of that for rock band. I think they I think they'll have a lot more flexibility than than they did. And um you know, also keep in mind um 
you know, early on there were these experiments with, well, first of all, there was George Martin's idea of putting the vocals all on one side so he could make a mono mix. They're not really married to that right now. Well, I had talked to him when the first batch of CDs came out in 1987, um, and he was complaining about the vocals on one side versus instruments on the other mixes of the first two albums. That. And I said, but, you know, the same thing on, on, on about half of Rubber Soul, you know, it has it that mm-hmm. way. And, mm. and it, you know, the, the rumor always was that, you know, it was getting – it was December. You had to get the album out, and so you – sort of were rushed on some of those mixes and that's why and he said no no what we were trying to do was to find a way to make a stereo mix that could be folded down into mono just by in effect pressing the mono switch and he said the problem was if you put the vocal in the middle um, of a stereo mix and you folded it into mono the, the vocals would turn out to be I think it was 4 dB louder than they really should and so it, that's why they went back to putting it on the side but anyway now they're not they don't have to be concerned with any of that stuff they can take the four track mixes put the vocals wherever they want have harmony vocals on either side because they were often on a different track they had, there's a lot that they can do, and uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing the remixes because I think that um, you know we have here the greatest pop music catalog ever recorded, and mm-hmm. what we've had it as until now are 1960s antiquated mixes, and they're the mixes that we had, and they're mixes that came out at the time, and you have to respect them, but the stuff can sound so much better, and We still have the old mixes. I mean, the standard albums will still be there. You can always go back to them if that's what you want to hear. If you want to hear Nowhere Man with the vocals just on one side, that's up to you. But, um, Mm -hmm. you know, I'd like to hear I'd I'd like to hear the new mixes just to see what can be done uh, because I have an idea what can be done. And and it's it's pretty good, I think. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Al? I would well. I would ditto, especially those last uh, few thoughts that uh, that Alan had about uh, about the you know the the fact that as our friend uh, Robert Rodriguez has been campaigning for for some time now, you know basically he feels that the entire catalog should be remixed, you know because of the fact that you we you know that we would be able to take advantage of the the great strides techno- uh, technologically that uh, that we've uh, that we've taken in the last uh, ten years or so, uh, you know, even there are things you can do, you know, either on a professional or amateur level uh, that you know now that we're just we're science fiction ten years ago. So uh, and and as uh, as Alan said, you know, if you're if you're that married to the original. Uh, mixes, uh, you've got them. I, somehow, I seem to I seem to recall having this conversation about the U.S. albums. But you know, if you if you're that married to any of the different mixes, uh, yeah, you've got them. You can just go back to them and and enjoy them. Uh, but I think it's uh, I think it's a great opportunity uh, for them to be able to kind of expand on this. You know this very rich catalog. Um, I don't know how much they're going to be able to do with, say, you know, "Love Me Do" and "From Me to You" and "She Loves You," but uh, uh, but certainly in the case of the material from '64 on, uh, the potential is uh, is very great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you brought up an interesting point, Al. Um, they have been so beholds into those remaster mixes um, from the remastered CDs and this is the first time they've they've ventured from that. I mean they did it with the US albums, they did it with the Japanese box and now they're you know they're going away from that. That's really interesting. Um, it's it's definitely, you know, they're definitely taking taking a turn for the better because I think a lot there were a lot of people even though a lot of people were real happy with the remasters there were also those that you know that uh, didn't you know didn't think they were that big of a deal. So well, Ken, the, the, those you... people, those people 
the ones who weren't satisfied with the mm-hmm. as you know, the 90909 uh, remasters. Those are the kind of people that are never satisfied about anything because those were <laughs> absolutely magnificent. And in that particular case, yeah, because of the fact that the the 1987-88 um, you know, uh, reworkings were not all that successful sonically, we did need a, new, a newly remastered version of the original recordings. But that said, there is now you know, that much more room for remixed versions of those songs using, using the, the 21st century technology. Mm-hmm. Let me uh, before I forget, I want to bring up one thing. Um, correct something that that I wrote uh, today that uh, uh, some people listening may have seen, and but has since been corrected. I wrote that the clip of eight days a week on the first disc is from Shea Stadium, and obviously it's not because they didn't do it. Um, but they did use footage from Shea Stadium to create that clip, so it's one of those newly created type of things um but it but obviously there's no eight days a week uh, audio floating around unfortunately but anyway in, in um, fact I, I don't think there's a i don't think there's a video performance anywhere of them doing eight days a week no they you never know, did. They, 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 no. No, right. did no yeah you know, there's yeah. one of one well, other there's one other thing about the remixes i want to mention and i know ken hasn't had his say yet um I think we're also coming into a a time when that is becoming a lot more common. I mean, we're going to see on the Tug of War and Pipes of Peace reissues, there's going to be the original album and there's going to be a 2015 remix in the deluxe version Mm -hmm. anyway. Um, We're seeing for, for instance, the Yes albums are being um, remixed by a guy named Steve Wilson. Um, And Steve Wilson is, is a musician, makes his own albums quite good. But he is being hired by a lot of progressive bands, particularly, to remix their stuff. And he is not really always adhering to exactly what the original album sounded like. I mean, he's often pretty close. But, you know, there are people who are fanatical about these things who say, you know, the the Celeste is missing and the uh, whatever. But I think that, you know, what we're seeing is a lot of groups and producers – and their audiences are accepting the idea of someone coming in and making a remix, possibly because the originals are still out there. They can still get them. Often on these reissues, you get both the original mix and the remix. So I, I think it may be the Beatles are sort of uh, or Apple or seeing that, you know, this is something that's happening a lot now and maybe people will accept it more than they might have 20 years ago. That would it'd be. I think uh, when you're dealing with a younger audience, though, I think it's easier for them to accept it than it is for sure. an older, mm-hmm. more traditional audience, like with the Beatles. So I, I don't necessarily agree that. I, I think the Beatles would be a lot less likely to do something like that. Well, but yes, but, came out only a few years after the Beatles did, really. I mean, no, I, no, I, yeah. you're, you're, yeah, you're, it's also, mm-hmm. it's still not the, uh, the, the age of the audience is is a little younger, though. I mean, I, I'm not saying that the remix doesn't improve them. I think it, you know, I, I definitely think it does. It'll be interesting to see how far they go and to what, you know, whether they end up making the old mixes unavailable, whether they will be in fact always available. But we'll see. Um, Ken, uh, you've been sitting there quietly. Go ahead. <laughs> well, pretty much, I can I can echo what Alan and Al have said because I just agree with just about everything. Um, I've been saying for the longest time I never minded remixes at all as long as you still have the original mixes available. And I can always remember when Let It Be Naked came out, there was a, a famous radio DJ whose name I won't mention, and there was this big outcry: Paul is rewriting history with Let It Be Naked. You know, he's not rewriting history. Let it be is still out there. <laughs> so as long as the original is always there, you know, you got nothing to complain about. And with today's technology, if you can improve the sound in any way, I'm all for it. And truthfully, I just don't think there's going to be that radical a difference in the mix. I think there'll be some changes. And I happen to be one of those people who loved, loved Yellow Submarine soundtrack. And uh, as someone who has always hated, <laughs> even more so now, I hate lead vocals in one channel. I like when vocals are centered more. You know, I like when you can play around with that. 
Otherwise, if you if you're playing a song like Nowhere Man or Sgt. Pepper and Paul's in one channel, and if you've if you've got the speakers far apart, you know, it's like uh, you're listening to karaoke here. Sometimes mm -hmm. you don't really hear the lead vocals. I don't really go for that kind of sound. But um, if in any way it will improve the overall mix, I'm all for it as long as the originals stay intact. Yeah, so I have no problem with remixes at all. Um, but but like I said, I really don't think there's going to be anything drastic here in the mixes. It will be interesting, as we've been saying, when you're going back to songs that were done on two-track, how much can you play around with them? Really? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know with today's technology. And presumably yeah, they did, they these, these were appro approved, I would imagine, by Paul and Ringo at least. You know, I mean, it's not like someone's just going to put them out without their having heard them and, and oh, said, sure. yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely! I'm sure. I, I, I'm sure they all had. All four of them had. Yoko and Olivia also had input, so it, it has to get by all four of them for them to do something with that. I would think. Um, so anyway, so that I mean, this this has definitely been a a, a huge week. Uh, that's for sure. That's not the only big news. We found out by somewhat by surprise that Ringo is auctioning off about eight hundred pieces of his of his belongings through uh, Julian's auctions um, and some of it is the the usual kind of weird stuff that you find in auctions but one of them one of the items has gotten quite a bit of comment from people and it's his 1963 drum kit that was used to record a lot of the Beatles songs um, and guys I'm gonna go around the table and and ask you guys what you think of this I you know, I mean, some of the stuff that's being auctioned is is stuff that I mean, I'm not really, I wouldn't be interested in it if I had the money. Um, obviously, that drum kit would be nice. I'm not sure if I'd want that uh, the, the drum kit of uh, Tom Toms, but um, but what do you guys think? Let's start, I'll start with Alan again. Um, I think it's kind of fascinating. I mean, I, I, I this isn't, I don't think, the kind of thing where you can approve or disapprove. You know, it's his stuff. He can do what he wants. The uh, beneficiary of a lot of this is the Lotus Foundation, which is his foundation that um, I think helps kids. Um, and, uh, you know, but I don't know. I just kind of think that if I were Ringo and I had this 1963 Ludwig drum kit that I played on – probably half the records that are, that are on the one album that's coming out again. Um, and, you know, their first few albums, I think he used it through February 64. So that would be even through mm -hmm. the Sullivan shows. And, you know, that is one historic drum kit. That may be the most historic drum kit in the world. I kind of would want to hang on to it. So I'm, I'm just a little, you know, surprised that he's willing to let go of it. I mean, I think the estimates are something like, Five hundred to eight hundred thousand dollars, which you know wouldn't be surprising, but yeah, you know, I, I hope that that thing gets you know bought by a museum or someone who will donate it to a museum or lend it to a museum. Um, it's it's obviously an incredible piece, and there's a lot of there are guitars given to him by John and George, uh, one by uh, Mark Bolin of T Rex. A lot of instruments in there, lots of interesting stuff. You know, lots of outfits you know things that he wore in, in this or that show um and i guess the significance of that to a possible buyer of these things has to do i guess with how important they think that appearance was you know but um you know the drum kit this this particular drum kit for me is like the whoa <laughs> the incredible mm -hmm. thing so yeah that's that's all i think about it <laughs> I'm not going to be able to buy it, alas, but <clears throat> okay. As people say, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the estimate for the worth of that kit is three hundred thousand to five hundred thousand uh, dollars. Okay, I still so, can't get it. <laughs> right, um, uh, Al. Uh, uh, you know, notwithstanding the fact that uh, you know, obviously that drum kit is uh, it, it has a lot of history. Attached to it. Uh, other than that, um, frankly, I really don't care. Um, I, I, that, the whole auction thing bores me to tears, and uh, I, you know, it doesn't. Basically, have no comment. <laughs> so okay, well, you pretty much gave a comment there. Okay, 
um, Ken? Um, it interests me a lot in the sense that um, obviously for Ringo to have hold, held on to these items all these years, they must have some sentimental value to Ringo. But it is interesting that he's willing to part with them. I mean, the main reason why he's doing this, well, he's doing it for charity, but because he's held them in storage for so long and you know most of the time he doesn't even look at them so what good is it it's kind of like if we all had a record collection that years later most of it we hardly ever listen to what do you do with it except mm -hmm. that this is the Beatles that we're talking about so yeah the drum kit who wouldn't want to own that but uh, there's also um, he had the Beatles white album number one the first copy the one that was stamped number one and that's a part of this as well. I mean, who wouldn't want number one? So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of worthwhile stuff there to look into. There's also the um, there's a Mercedes Coupe that George Harrison owned in 2000. Mm -hmm. And after George passed away, it went to Ringo. There's just the mere fact that he held on to so much stuff all these years. And he said for 35 years he's had this stuff. It's more than that. But... Um, just the mere fact that he's done that must mean that it's got to be important to him to, to have had this in his collection. But now, you know, he's, he's 75 years old. What is he going to do with all this stuff? If it was me, right. I mean, I can't tell him what to do. I'd rather that it be in a museum for people to see, for the whole world to share in it. But this is his choice, and it is going to a good cause. So, you know, I'm all for it for that reason. All right. Anyway, um... Uh... We're only we we, didn't, we haven't gone through the whole hour. I guess we could uh, talk again, talk some more about. Uh, uh, Actually, there there is the, there is the, one thing I wish we, we I wish we could have brought up about the the video collection, which is you know there's I, a lot of videos that that are brand new, um, mm -hmm. you know that were just created no, I, for this I mean, collection. I, I, right. And I actually, yeah, I actually was gonna uh, was thinking about that myself. You mean the fact that they're doing like they did with the anthology is creating stuff for creating new stuff for it right yeah from the moment that we heard about you know possibly making a video collection for one you know that there are certain songs like eight days a week or the long and winding road for which they never made videos and certainly the earliest songs they didn't make videos for them so mm -hmm. how do you approach that what clips do you use you know for that kind of thing so it is interesting that for example they used the uh, for a hard day's night uh, the Beatles' performance in Paris for that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the live performance, you know, pulling something like that, which they've never released commercially before. Yeah, that is interesting. Right. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I remember the uh, uproar with the anthology CDs of of the uh, some of the outtakes that they use there, you know, the way they edited them together, people. And you see, actually still listening to those today, it's kind of jarring. You know, because we've heard the the full takes on the bootlegs, and it's like, and you know, it's kind of disappointing that they couldn't keep the uh, you know the takes whole rather than play around with them like that. You know, so I bet it'll uh, maybe with the with the videos it'll be a little different because you that you won't have the songs torn up as much. You know, I think it'd probably be easier to accept the videos than it would the songs. The way it looks right. to me is that if there was an original video, we're getting the original video. And if there was an original variant, in some cases, we're getting those too. And it's mm. it's really just the songs for which there wasn't an original video that they're either going for a concert clip, which is not a bad choice, right. or they're going for you know something like Eight Days a Week where they're using footage of you know from Shea um, mm -hmm. to to make a clip. And there's a, you know, there's a time-honored uh, uh, history of that. Um, you know, and, uh, the very first thing, Love Me Do, I mean, there's, uh, Ken and I were talking about this before. I mean, they're, they're using the performance that's in the Mersey Beat, which was a very early documentary about the Beatles mm -hmm. and the whole Mersey sound. And in that show, they play bits of Love Me Do in, I think, two different different sections with interviews and things in between them. 
And that's really the only footage we have of them playing Love Me Do. So mm-hmm. when Capitol wanted to do a, what was it, 40th anniversary or something of Love Me Do or, you know, uh, or 20th anniversary, I guess it was 1982. Yeah. Um, they used, right. you know, they used that footage um, and they used a lot of other later footage to, to fill out the thing. I think they're going to, you know, they're going to do something like that here too. They talk about, in particular, using the Mersey sound. But what do they say? Newly edited clip featuring material from a BBC, from BBC TV's The Mersey Sound with performance footage filmed on 27th of August, 63, at Little Theatre in Southport. I don't think that the whole song exists in that footage, so they'll have to do something else, um, unless, of course, they've somehow found the rest of the footage, but that seems unlikely. Mm. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think for if there wasn't an original clip, they have to do what they what they can. And I, I can't see complaining too much about that, really, um, because if they want to, they want to replicate the songs on the album and they don't all have clips. So right. I think concert clips are a good choice. And I think in the case of Long and Winding Road, for which there wasn't a, a promo clip taking it out of the film and also ideally jettisoning the Phil Spector production is a good choice, too. Hmm. Okay. And also, Eleanor right. Rigby is taken right from Yellow Submarine. Oh, really? Let's see. Mm. Yeah. Eleanor Rigby, yes. Clip taken directly from Yellow Submarine. That's right. Hmm. Well, that was a kind of nice clip, actually. Mm-hmm. Yellow Submarine mm-hmm. is taken from Yellow Submarine, too. It says from... Mm. The, it's interesting the way they word it. Yellow Submarine says this clip is newly created from original Yellow Submarine footage... And in Eleanor Rigby, this clip is taken directly from the Yellow Submarine movie. So with the Yellow Submarine footage, we'll get, you know, something new. Possibly they'll use some of the live um, material that, you know, they they there's they filmed the Beatles in the studio, uh, some of which mm-hmm. appears in Mod Odyssey. And, of course, they're, they're at the end of the film. Uh, maybe they'll use some of that stuff. Um, yeah. Interesting to see. I mean, listen, these things – at least give us something we haven't seen that we can guess at and, uh, you know, see whether we like it or not with, with the rest of it, you know, with the strawberry fields clip and rain and paperback writer and all that, basically we'll be able to just sort of sit back and say, yeah, it looks good. (laughs) looks better than I've seen (laughs) it before. Like surround sound mix or don't like the surround sound mix, whatever. But, you know, this is at least something fresh, you know? Uh, Yeah. I also noticed, I also noticed number one, there, on the second disc, they're putting an edit of uh, Hey Jude together with two takes uh, and the uh, different David Frost introduction. And and for Revolution, it doesn't say it's got the Paul and George Shooby Doo Wop, although I assume because it says John Lee's vocal is completely live, as are most of Paul and George's backing vocals. So I assume that's what they're using. I yeah, guess. it looks like. Yeah, it. I, yeah. I th- in fact, I think all of the takes of Revolution that they did, you know, that day had mm-hmm. the, you know, you know, had that little little bit from, you know, from Revolution One. Yeah, but they didn't. They didn't all have. I've seen clips that where Paul and George don't do the Shooby Doo Wop. Oh, okay. so there, are, there is more than one version of that. That's that's my point, and I hope mm. because it says there's one of two versions, and so I hope that's the one they use because that's obviously the better one. But yeah, we'll, we'll we'll soon we'll soon find out. They haven't they haven't asked us, folks. You know what's another interesting thing about Revolution? Now that I'm looking at the description, one of two versions. This was shot the same day as Hey Jude. John's lead vocal is completely live, as are most of Paul's and George's backing vocals. The instrumentation, including Nicky Hopkins' electric piano, is from the master tape. Well, so for the instrumentation, they have the flexibility to do the 5.1 mix and just use the live vocals from the David Frost performance. So we can still get a 5.1, even though on the, on the Frost show, I mean, that's a mono tape, basically. Mm, right. So assuming they can tease the vocals out of the mono tape. Um, right. Right. We will. Well, we will see. Like I said, we will see. I also noticed that they have Don't Let Me Down in here. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the version that they're using is the one from Let It Be Naked, because that version is a composite of the two takes from the album mm-hmm. rooftop. So they're using yeah. that recording. So I guess they're just using the Let It Be footage from the movie, but they're using mm-hmm. that recording. Mm. 
And I will say, I, I will say that I'm really thrilled that they're doing Free as a Bird in real love because I, especially Free as a Bird, I absolutely adore that video. It would have been interesting, however. Yeah. Imagine if they had, had to put the third song in. Uh, now and then. Imagine if they had uh, just now and then. You know, it's just no, no, because it's a. It's not that good a song. B. You know, they determined that they didn't really that they weren't able to do that much with it. So you know, so be it that that it's not on there. I think it would have caused a media explosion. What it would have done? No, so, it I'm, I'm not. I, I you know. explosion. It would have caused. An explosion with the idiots on on social media, but it wouldn't cause a media explosion because most of the media have no idea what that song is. And it's you know it's it's not a, you know it's you know it's an it's an okay song. And the and media. They, Speaking of the media, and, I mean the New York Times did absolutely nothing about the DVD um, release that was just announced. And for the yeah. Ringo thing, they printed AP copy. I'm just saying. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they, they they miss you, Alan. They miss you. Oh. Most of the most of the recent uh, significant passings, they've either you know given you know kind of like lip service to, or have used you know the Associated Press. So that shows you what the New York Times has become. Yeah, and we won't we won't get into any political. <laughs> I'm not going to even go there because I was listening to something last night that uh, pretty well had had a lot to say about that, but we won't get into that on the show. But anyway, um, I think we pretty well covered everything. Unless uh, there's some I- issues that you want to – anything you guys want to gripe about or yell about or <laughs> scream about or what? Anything? Anybody want to take up anything? No? There's nothing left to shout about. <laughs> There's nothing left to shout about. Well, I think I think then that will. Are, are, are we? Uh, do we have? Are we? Uh, are we? Uh, have we run out of time? I think so. Anybody? Any good, oh, okay. Well, I guess I guess that's it then. I guess we will we will say goodbye for another week. Um, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna go around the table and let you guys all say goodbye. We don't usually we have we've kind of not done done this much lately, but I'm gonna let everybody say goodbye. Alan, go ahead. All right. Goodbye, everyone, and see you next week. Al? So long, and we'll see you next time. Ken? Thanks so much to everybody for listening, and we'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci saying we will definitely see you next time. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to catch us on YouTube and Podbean, and and uh, come by Facebook and say hello to us. We'll, we'd love to talk to you. Take care, everybody. See you next week. Bye.